So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite categories of raw materials. And this category is the green category of raw materials. Now, there are quite a lot of green raw materials, but in this video, I'm going to pick out what I think are kind of give or take just about the six most important or some of the most important ones. Um, now, it's interesting, green materials in general, and that's because when you go to green perfumes, green notes in perfumes aren't actually that common. Um, the green category of perfumes, let's say, um, is not you know the most popular. You don't often see it in marketing notes that much. Very green notes like leaves or grass or this or that. And that is really what green notes as a category are. They kind of smells like fresh grass, fresh leaves, and that kind of thing. In fact, it's so difficult to come by a good green perfume that one of the few perfumes that I actually bought, yes, I don't actually buy that many perfumes and um, you probably wouldn't when you know how cheap it is to make them. But one of the few perfumes I did actually buy, but one of the few perfumes I did actually buy was something called Play Green by Comme des Garçons. And that is because this perfume really does smell green. It really does smell like uh, fresh grass, fresh leaves, that kind of things, which is very uncommon. Uh, so while it may not be technically the best perfume ever, um, I absolutely loved it that there was actually a perfume that did that kind of smell. Um, so I thought, you know, I need to get that. So I did. Um, but despite that, despite the fact that very overt green notes like, uh, you know, fresh leaves and grass aren't often the most featured notes in perfume, the green notes or the green raw materials actually used in perfumery, um, they're actually extremely common and widespread. The difference is that usually they're not used as a kind of main style raw material. Um, like I said, that's not usually what people are looking for. But very often you'll find green notes and perfumes used in very trace amounts just to add little effects. They're often used for kind of natural or uplifting or freshening effects. So a lot of the notes that I will describe to you in this video um, while they could be used to artistic effect in large amounts, um, usually they're used a lot in things, uh, but only in tiny, tiny amounts. So you probably wouldn't notice them. But then again, you know, for you as a perfumer, knowing that and knowing that you can use them in trace amounts to good effect is also very useful because it actually allows you to start adding those little fine tune adjustments, those little tweaks to kind of just bump up the freshness in your perfume. So without further ado, let's actually get into it. Um, what are the six kind of, let's say canonical uh, green notes that I've pulled out for you guys? So then we're gonna start with one called Cis 3 Hexanol. And this one I've got here as a 1% dilution. And a lot of these green notes are very, very strong and powerful. Um, so quite often a 1% or 0.1% dilution is appropriate for smelling them in. So what does this one smell like? Well, this one smells like fresh cut grass. And actually this is probably uh, one of the most well-known or most popular, um, especially at least in perfumery folklore terms, green notes. And that's why I decided to start with this one. Now, what it actually is, is a six carbon molecule. And these kind of six carbon molecules are very often um, emitted by plants in response to being wounded. So while to us, the smell of, you know, when you cut grass or you go and crumple up some leaves, it's got this lovely fresh green smell, which is essentially what this smells like, you know, to a plant, that's kind of its um, biological signal that, hey, we're being injured kind of thing. Um, so I guess it depends on your perspective if you're us or the plant as to if that's a good smell or not. Um, but for us, you know, as humans, usually it signifies fresh green verdure and that kind of thing. Anyway, um, this one in particular is kind of one that's very widespread. It's found in a lot of plants. A lot of plants release it. And for that reason, it's extremely useful, especially in a cause when you're trying to recreate some kind of natural smell, um, especially something like a fruity smell or a floral accord um, in perfumery. But aside from that, in the context of an actual complete perfume, um, you could, if you really wanted to make a perfume that smells of fresh cut grass, which you know I would absolutely love personally, you could go and put in a large amount of this. But usually what is actually done is it's just used in trace amounts. Like I say, it's part of those accords, or you can use just a little trace element uh, on its own for a bit of greenness, a little bit of freshness. But they really are small percentages because as soon as you start going over, you know, actually quite a small amount, it suddenly starts to smell of grass. Um, and the other thing about this is it's very much a top note. I would call it an ultra top note. It really only lasts about a quarter of an hour or so on a scent strip. Um, so if you were to dump a load of this in, the problem you would have is when you sprayed your perfume, it would smell really strongly of this cut grass. And then because it all evaporates so quickly, immediately that would die down and then it would smell of whatever else is left in there. And usually people don't like their perfumes to vary absolutely wildly um, in the first half an hour after spraying it on. Obviously you're gonna have top notes and 
they're always going to evolve and make it a little bit different. But you know, usually you don't want your perfume to smell absolutely starkly of one thing and then have it not smell like that at all afterwards. Now, aside from this cis hexanol molecule, there are actually lots of different derivatives. That means very similar molecules that have little different bits they put on the end um, or different kind of, let's say, versions of it. And these will have their own different kind of facets and variations on that fresh cut grass smell. Uh, so for example, cis hexanol acetate, which has much more of a fruity banana kind of green smell. Now, I cover a whole host of these derivatives in my online course. So if you're interested in that, you can go check it out. Um, but for now, we're gonna move on to the next molecule. So the next one I've got here is triplal. And again, this is that 1% dilution for smelling because it's just a very, very strong thing. To me, this one smells more like crushed leaves rather than cut grass. And this one has a distinctive kind of apple flesh smell. So this triplal does possess a lot of similarities to cis hexanol. For example, they're both ultra top notes, i.e. they don't last long at all on the skin on the sense strip. They only hang around for, you know, maybe a quarter of an hour or so. They're both very green, they're both very strong notes, which means they're both usually used only in trace amounts and perfumes. Where they begin to differ is the actual specific kind of, let's say, subtype of green smell. Whereas Cistry Hexnot is a lot more of the fresh cut grass, for me, Triplal is a lot more kind of crunched up leaves and specifically, it kind of smells a bit like green apple flesh or if you imagine um, a young fruit growing at an orchard that's not at all ripe yet and you kind of broke it open and started smelling it, for me, Triplal is a lot more reminiscent of that. Now, the way they're actually used in perfumes, unlike Cistry Hexanol, which is more often used in the floral or fruity or some kind of accord itself for the realism, I often see Triplal more being used straight in the finished perfume as more of a kind of greening up or a freshening agent, just in tiny, tiny trace amounts. But you know, you can go and try this for yourself. Just add the tiniest, tiniest dose of Triplal. And what it can do is it can really brighten up and freshen that opening, that lift, that top note of your perfume, even if it's not combined necessarily with other green notes or forming part of some kind of natural accord. Now that said, you could still make an overt accord with it. So for example, if you wanted to make like a, you know, a fresh leafy green accord or a green apple flesh accord, then, you know, this would be one of the first raw materials I would use to go and do that kind of thing. Anyway, next here I have Girl Barnum essential oil. So again, this one is at 1% dilution in alcohol because you know, just like the others, it's very strong. So what does this one smell like? Well, this one is quite unique. And to me, this one is, it does smell green, but not in that same green, fresh kind of leafy way as the other ones. This is much more of a bitter and astringent green smell. And it's somewhere uh, between kind of foliage or like kind of tomato leaf kind of green. But it's also, to my nose, got this element of a kind of woody, maybe twiggy smell, which I find reminiscent a little bit of something like narrowly or petty grain. Now again, this one is a top note, so it doesn't last very long, but I would say it lasts just that little bit longer than the other two previously discussed. But where this one really differs is that this one is a natural, and it's actually one of the uh, very few notes in perfumery that is a natural that's really distinctly uh, falling under the green category. A lot of the green raw materials are actually synthetics. So this one, if you want to add kind of a green top note to your perfume and one that's more elegant and it doesn't, you know, smell overtly synthetic and something you want to use in higher amounts, uh, then this can be kind of, let's say, your way into a very uh, traditional, classy version of a green opening for your perfume, let's say. And because of that kind of sunny connotation of the things, you know, like the, let's say, tomato leaf-like or narrowly smells, you know, to my nose, it kind of makes you think of that, it's kind of a green foliage smell, but it does make me think of like a sunny evening or something like that when I smell it. Now, quite interestingly, one of the constituent molecules in the Galbanum essential oil is actually structurally and in smell quite similar to a pretty famous molecule in perfumery, and that one is called allyl amyl glycolate. And that one has actually been used quite famously in perfumes like Davidoff's Cool Water or Aventus by Creed. Now, in my online course, I do discuss this category of molecules, similar structure molecules, and how those can actually be used in those formulas. I will say, though, that those molecules are very strong and, let's say, uh, even more, let's say, in a sense, bitter and stringent. Uh, so, you know, some people can find them difficult to use, but perfumes have found success in using them, especially with kind of more fresh and aquatic notes. Um, this galbanum, on the other hand, is a bit more rustic, a bit more down to earth. Um, but all of those kind of uh, molecules kind of sit in a similar space as far as the categories go in perfumery. Anyway, next here I've got Stemone. So this is another green raw material. Again, I've got this at 1% in alcohol. And this one is actually one of my favorite raw materials in perfumery. And to me, it smells a little bit like ivy leaves and black currant. Now, this one was discovered in 1967 and this really offered a new style of green note, 
And one of the most important features about it was unlike other popular green notes like Sistry Hexanol and Triplau, this one is more of a mid note than a top note. So this is really useful because it allows you to extend a green note down into at least the mid note region of your perfume. Now, what is it actually used for in perfumery? Well, the biggest use that I've seen knocking about for it is a lot of perfumers seem to have picked this up for use in fig leaf accords. And a nice illustration of this is Jean-Claude Elena's uh, very simplistic minimal fig leaf accord, and he likes to pair Stemone with Gamma Octolactone. So if you've got Stemone and Gamma Octolactone, put them together, and that's you know a basic minimal impression of a fig leaf accord. Um, but yeah, if you wanna make a fig leaf accord, uh, then this seems to be what a lot of perfumers use for it. Now, I said, you don't just have to use it for a fig leaf accord. You can, of course, use it, for example, for other things. If you want to make a black current accord, but it can also just be used straight up in perfumes for its own kind of abstract effect. Let's say not to necessarily create a particular note, but just for its nice smell in itself. Okay, next one I have here is cucumber aldehyde, um, also called 2,6-nonadiena. Now this one I've actually got at 0.1% this time in alcohol, even weaker than the other dilutions because this thing is so crazy strong. Now when you smell it, it smells exactly like freshly peeled cucumber, uh, which I'm pretty sure is why it's named cucumber aldehyde. Now this one is a mid note leaning towards the top note side of things a little bit. But uh, this one is really important because, so there are a lot of molecules in this category of what we call violet leaf type odorants. And there are a lot of molecules with similar kind of smells. They're kind of like fresh, watery, green, sometimes quite piercing, sharp green smells. Um, but they're all these similar molecules and I put them in this violet leaf category because they all smell similar to this cucumber aldehyde. And cucumber aldehyde in particular is naturally found inside of violet leaves as well as cucumbers. So if you ever smelled violet leaf absolute, um, you should notice that kind of quite green smell to it. Actually, violet leaf absolute is classed in perfumery as a green raw material. Um, but this is really, let's say, the one found in nature. So there are a lot of these similar molecules that smell similar, um, and often those are used when recreating kind of violet leaf type accords. Um, but this one is used, and this is the actual kind of one that is found. So what's it used for? Well, goes without saying, if you want to make a violet leaf accord, um, which can be useful because especially violet leaf absolute is quite expensive, you can do that, or a cucumber note, which, you know, both of these things aren't that, that common in perfumes. Uh, but also, even if you want to make a violet base and you want to go and flesh out that base and make it a little bit more realistic with the other elements of the actual violet plant, so I'm talking about a violet flower here, which is nice and velvety uh, kind of smell, but if you want to add a little bit of realism to indicate the whole plant, you can just add a tiny, tiny touch of this uh, cucumber aldehyde to that accord. So this is something I cover in my online course with actually a formula that shows how you can do that. But aside from that, these violet leaf odorants, they can again just be used in perfumes a little bit like the triple or the Sistry Hexanol in tiny trace amounts, uh, just to add a bit of green lift and freshness. So I will say with these ones, um, you know, I think that it's a bit harder to use because I do find that sometimes these violet leaf notes, I would say sometimes the accord they make with other things isn't always, let's say, as kind of popular as some of the other things. I feel like triplal is used so much because it's a really safe bet, uh, whereas something like cucumber aldehyde, um, at least from my experience, these kind of violet leaf things, they just don't fit into quite so many compositions. Anyway, this final one I've got for you guys is phenylacetaldehyde. Um, and this one is kind of green note. I would say it's kind of also leaning on a floral note as well. Again, this one's at the 1% dilution because it's quite strong. But to me, this one smells like crushed flower stem. So I can imagine myself going into a florist and like breaking some uh, flowers in half. And then it's kind of that smell of the green stems with like the floral petals as well. Now this one is a mid note, so it lasts a reasonable amount of time and that also makes it quite useful for floral accords, which are often uh, composed with a lot of mid notes and are often used in the heart of perfumes, in the middle of perfumes. Um, but specifically, uh, phenylacetaldehyde is kind of the famous hyacinth note. So if you ever want to make a hyacinth accord, which as far as florals go is really on the green end of the spectrum, about as green as you can get, um, then this is what you can really use to give it that distinctive hyacinth smell. Now that does kind of allude to the main use of this phenylacetaldehyde stuff. It's really useful in floral accords, especially for a hyacinth accord, but there's also other flowers as well. Uh, things like daffodils, you can also use it in stuff like snowdrops. But essentially this stuff is kind of the green note that you can use in floral accords if you want to go for that, that green side of things, aside from just kind of the naturalness of the 
cystery hexanol. If you go and smell this fennel acetaldehyde, you know that kind of distinctive smell that I mean. And you know, I guess it's hard to describe through the camera, but uh, if you want what I would call as that flower shop or that hyacinth smell, uh, then this is the stuff to use for it. So that's it. My kind of six green notes. And it's not necessarily my favorite six green notes. There are other ones that I like more than some of those, but a lot of those are very niche. And then it's not necessarily what I think are, let's say the kind of six most useful of all time. Um, but what I do think or why I picked those six is it's really indicative of kind of the different types of green notes that you can get because, um, you know, like, Things like Cicery Hexanol, you've got loads of different Cicery Hexanol derivatives, for example, Cicery Hexanol Acetate, which, uh, like I mentioned, is a very important green note. For example, you've got loads of those violet leaf odorants. Uh, but these kind of six, I think, are fairly orthogonal within the green space. I, it's giving you a, a good kind of overview of the kind of actual broad different types of green smell that you can get and roughly how you can use them in a perfume um, and what you can do with them. So I hope this video gave you a little bit of inspiration. Hopefully you can take away something from this and maybe apply one of these notes in your uh, future perfumery compositions. If you like the video, I would love it if you could go and subscribe to the channel or like the video. That way you're far more likely to have my videos pop up in your feed when you make a new one. So if you go and do that, you'll probably be one of the first to see me next time when I release another video just like this, all about perfumery. Oh.